Sure, no. we are. How We're are you all? It. The lead. We're live. We're live. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all back here again. We are. We are. <laughs> right. You want to do some shout outs, boys? Uh, sure. So. Wait, is that the, the chat? Like, oh man, we have so many people. Uh, hello to Vince, Tisoy, Candy, Clipper, BM, Tisoy again, Reggie, Melts, Carlos, Kevin, Christopher, Rocky, um, Mike, Mondegreen, uh, Junai, uh, GGRG, Rick. Kid, Gray, Richard, Silver, Raymart, Caris, uh, uh, Sonia, oh, you're a natural Jesse, Savannah. Have you done Fernando, this Leo, Herlin, Clarence. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello, guys. I need water. <laughs> Tsoi says if this goes for two or three hours, I'm going to eat my lunch after the live show. It is not going to go for two or three hours, that's for sure. <laughs> Gad your lunch while you're watching is probably yeah eat, eat your lunch while you're watching people so we've got a couple of uh access scholarships to give away if you are new the way that works people free to, free to, free to enter get into the discord register there uh but ultimately we're what we're trying to do on this this friday show is help educate you on crypto and blockchain in addition to what's going on with axi uh, and as part of that, we one of the, the teams goes to the best question. The best question. So doesn't have to be actually related either, people. Um, anything to do with blockchain or crypto, we are here to help. Um, so kind of the structure of the show, we're going to have a look at the, the news that's been going on in the space, and there's been plenty of it in the last 24 hours. Uh, take your questions on that on Axi and uh, do these giveaways. So get your good questions flowing. Not, also, not just Axi, but play to earn. Play to earn, true. Play to so, earn. So NFT as, gaming. That is going to be the next thing that's coming, and it's coming fast. As today's team is going to be by Jordan, I'm taking the total freedom of deciding this extra team, and whoever writes the funniest tweet mentioning the r forking uh <laughs> twitter account because obviously I'm, I'm going completely uh -oh. random so you need to <laughs> tag r forking and the most hard forkers the and hard for at r forkers apologies for that and johnny. and and johnny you don't have to tag me because like otherwise it's already too complicated but you need to write a very nice funny interesting tweet i want to see like you know Probably. the 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 creativity i want to see like the the shakespeare level of skills of like the tweet of uh, of whatever and then the best one that is obviously going to mention like a little bit of what we do here um jordan will pick the funniest one um and there is, will be another scholarship for that as well. So feel free. And yes, I know that many of you are going to say like, does that work also on Facebook? Of course it does work also on Facebook and on Instagram <laughs> and on TikTok and whatever social media you want to use. Go we ahead. Had some nice TikToks the other day. Did you guys check those out? Those are yeah. awesome. Some TikTok hard forking. We don't have any hard forkers on TikTok. Officially, anyway. we, need to, we need to take care of that, don't we? Um, did you boys have any success with the positions, the jobs that you were looking to fill that we spoke about last week? Maybe at the top of the show, you could just briefly mention that again if you didn't. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I have like another call this <laughs> afternoon and uh, with an HR company, and uh, we will see. But um, yeah, so far, nobody. I've had really, what are they going to charge you to, to find somebody? Zero, really. Yeah, they own me favorites. That's a that's a great business model from the HR company. Yeah, they 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 can say that like they find someone to me, so <laughs> that's an achievement. We we've had uh, two scholars step up, Kingsback and Errol have both uh, offered to help organize the tournaments and some of the scholarship teams, so that's good. And so we started doing an internal tournament for the scholars and so the scholars are going to fight it out and the best three scholars are going to get 
new premium teams. And then the teams that they're running now will get in here, uh, grant in sent to a new scholar. So we're going to start leveling up. So the three best scholars play in the tournament and they get new, awesome, excellent teams. And then whatever's the three they give up will go to the community. And it's the, so the scholar is going to sponsor an outside community member. So if, you know, Errol has like Joe Schmo is his uh, non scholar sponsor. If he wins, Joe Schmo gets the team. So it's a good idea by those guys to how to get more community involvement and more people uh, into the community. So I kind of like it. So I said, I put up three teams. So the, the first winner gets their choice, obviously. And then the last second and third, they fight each other. And then whoever wins gets their pick of the team. And then the third guy gets the third team. So it should be fun. Nice stuff. That's cool. How, how long is going to be the tournament? Uh, I haven't, uh, I don't know if Errol or King's back are in here, but we haven't, we're just kind of fleshing it out. We haven't figured it out yet. You know, it might take a couple of weeks to go through, right? Because, you know, if everybody's playing and we do only do it on one day or two days a week, it might take a bit of time. But, uh, you know, we're d- developing it right now. So Jazzy's been helping a bit with that too. And, uh, yeah. ah, the legendary Jazzy. For sure. <laughs> I've got, we've got some axes for her. We got to set her up on Sean's what? account there. We're going to do that. Start One thing that I think would be interesting is also to do like the official eSport uh, team, like having that like group of like, you know, five yeah. scholars that like, or three or whatever is going to be the number that when there are tournaments to participate, that they are like, boom, that's the front line of the r working eSports team. Basically. Yeah, I think that's what the idea was with the mini tournament, the internal tournament, right? So we can figure out who's the best. So we started, you know, anybody that has a lacking team, getting them a good team so that they can play to their full ability and see, right? Yep. So it's not just like, oh, I suck because my team sucks or, you know, that guy's only good because he has the best team, right? So we're going to try and equal it out and find out who actually are the best players and get them on the tournaments for sure. So those guys have been, they've got their ears to the ground looking for the new tournaments coming up. So there's more places to enter. And yeah. So Jazzy's saying end of submission will be on May 17th. So there's still three days to go for anybody that is on uh, on Discord, that is a scholar. Uh, that's your chance. To anybody that was complaining, I know I'm joking, by the way, on this, but to anybody that was complaining fairly is about like, upgrade my team, sir. This is your shot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as Mr. Gonzo mentioned, uh, obviously, you know, the show has a, a, a big play to earn focus people and we might have something special to announce in the, in the coming uh, week or so to expand on that aspect for this awesome community. That's so Smash Sean, the Likes awesome community, by the way. Sean is going to now give the announcement of the announcement. And the I just gave the announcement, the announcement of the announcement of the announcement. announcement, of the announcement. Go, yeah. Sean. Explain okay. what is going to happen with the announcement <laughs> of the announcement. Elon Musk is uh, joining the team. <laughs> we'll be launching a new coin called the Gonzo and Stefano and Sean coin. It's going to be worth a fortune. It doesn't pollute the environment. Most important good. part. <laughs> Most important thing. Now, Mr. Gonzo, I've, um, you, do you have a clip to, to share with us? You, you did a pretty cool little animation there, which I see all over the place at the moment. Yeah. Play to earn. So what happened is, <clears throat> you know, got into the Axie community and, you know, I just started showing my stuff around a bit, talked to J-Ho and all those guys. And they approached, they were like, hey, we need an animator. So I put my hand up and then they, they're they doing this documentary on play to earn in the Philippines. I, I was, I was that one that this, this thing pretty made, interesting. Actually, you actually read the Axie. And so I did the intro here, which is kind of crucial. But in Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija, a rural province north of Manila, one community found an unusual way to make ends meet. Welcome to the world of play to earn. Oh, that music everybody loves. <laughs> In August 2020, I... So there, that was that little intro we did. Very cool, another, man. 
another excellent little piece of crypto payments, you know. <laughs> I quoted the rate in December, you know, it was five hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Now it's worth a lot more than that. So that's kind of cool. Oh. <laughs> so I call that uh barter trading. I don't know what that is. But sometimes you end up here like you you gotta time your artwork with the market. You know, it's like, oh, you only get paid after you finish. So you want to finish before the coin pumps and not after it pumps. So it's like, oh, no, I got to finish this before it pumps. And it pumps, and then you get half of what you were expecting because the coin price went way up. Yeah, but then it <laughs> pumps a note, year after, basically. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, guys, um, let's, uh, Mr. Gonzo, can you bring up the, the project review board? So this is from our uh, show that we do on Tuesdays, People 1 BTC and 32 Ethereum. Uh, where we've been demonstrating utility and looking at these these projects. So we'll just whip through that quickly, then we'll get into a, to a giveaway here and have a look at a bit of news for you. Um, Can I just give a little shout out there? Play to absolutely. Earn is a new Twitter, and they're sharing our stuff around right now. There's a new tweet out there that they just shared about this particular documentary. So if you guys could go retweet that, share it around, that would be super great because they're on board with what we're doing. You know, that that documentary was made by YGG, which is the competition. That That's our that's the biggest scholarship, right? Uh, they have a lot of stuff going on, but they're super into helping us, you know, get the word out about our scholarship and what we're doing here at Hard Forking. So if we could show them a bit of love on Twitter, that would be super cool, guys. Please give them a share. If you go to the most recent Hard Forking tweets or my tweets, it's all there. So thanks. Indeed. Because that's all over Coindesk, you know. They got a lot of eyeballs on it, and the Mark Cuban. So we should tow our wagon to that uh, train. Absolutely. Hi, Mark. Uh, we know that you got your news from us, so <laughs> just saying that. Yeah, Stefano just wants to add. He told the world about Axie well before you did, and uh, and and Polygon. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Don't worry. Just just call me in private next time. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> don't worry about that. Hey guys, wouldn't it be cool if there was some other play to earn games that we could, you know, help our community with? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder like. So here's a nice thing, because like you, you have a big list of games on uh, on our Discord. And you know, this is like a little bit of a stretch because we're legally not allowed to say anything yet. But um, you have a list on Discord. Use your imagination, something There's might happen. There's seven of them. There's seven games on there we've got listed on our play to earn games. So you got what 13% chance of like guessing the, <laughs> the right one or something like that. <laughs> this uh, kind of sounds like a secret announcement of a secret of announcement. Yeah, it could this be. Is, could exactly. Be. This is the secret announcement of a secret that we can't tell you until next week, but we're giving you 13% clue. We're it's, teasing it's, you. It's probably like a, a bit more than next week. It's probably, let's say two. Let's say ten days or two weeks, something like that. Like so let's let's not overwhelm ourselves or set up for for failing. That then next week we don't <laughs> we don't communicate. We have some too. super cool stuff coming up for you, people. You'll be very pleased you're part of this community. So to to make that in a super simple way, whoever is part of the community will be very happy. Uh, at least I would believe, but we will shake things up in a very strong way that the hard forking community got created when we started like all the play to earn things on X and so on with that goal of basically like ensuring that more and more people could make a living out of uh, a blockchain in general. And so play to earn is obviously like a top thing right now, but you know, we all love Axie, but the word is not just Axie. Let's let's <laughs> let's don't forget that thing. Like you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. And so, as we have done in the past, of you know pushing in and issuing like those. Soon we're probably gonna reach like 150, and soon maybe even 200 scholarship with what Jordan is gonna start doing now with like all the new Axies and so on. The tournaments, the esports team. Like as you see, there is like a lot that is happening. We're gonna add. I would say in two weeks, another layer to what the hard forkers community will be able to do on, I would say a weekly or maybe a daily, you know, that's that type of things. We want to make sure that your eggs are going to be spread to another basket as well. 
and uh, you know you're, you're going to be able to to get your your fair part of the of the return as well, and and lease a couple of problems out as well. So that, I think that we stop here because <laughs> we can't say more. We give one more little shout out here. We've got mm-hmm. you know we've got our international communities right. The Filipinos community community has been really strong from the beginning. You know with Axie. Uh, We've also got a lot of Venezuelan scholars, which is super cool. That, and if you go by like, the Axie chart, that's the major players, Filipino, uh, Venezuela, the US, and then Brazil. And so we've got a couple uh, new scholars from Brazil. And there's two new managers that I've brought on, friends of mine that are also doing, they're just basically gonna be part of the community and they're gonna have scholarships available once in a while. So Ian, he's from Brazil. He's got a couple of scholarships. And then DC Star, who's also a really good chartist, Sean. Maybe you should get him on doing some charts. And he's also starting yes. a scholarship. And so he's in England. Uh, so he's a cool guy. We've been uh, you know, doing stuff together for the last couple of years again in uh, our, our other crypto group. So you know, we're also bringing in some managers to be a part of the community. And you know, we're not directly involved, but they'll just help us you know, solve some of the scholarship issues when people want scholarships. Yeah. So, and well, sorry, what was your friend's name that, that does the TA? DC Star. DC Star. Is he here today? Uh, no, nah, if he's in England, he'll be fast asleep, I would yeah. imagine. But he's been in the Discord uh, you know, quite a bit. And, mm. so, and then we also started up now just our India channel. We've got a couple of scholars from India, which is another area that's you know being hit hard economically with COVID and all that other stuff. So we'd like to see those communities grow in India. And then Indonesia. Yep. There's a, new, a couple of new scholars from Indonesia as well. So I'm super stoked. That's what, for me, that's like the coolest thing, you know, like you can have all these people working together from all different parts of the world. And now each person, like the Venezuelan scholars is like, dude, boss, I have like five friends that want to play. I'm like, cool. That sounds good. Because then, you know, you can teach them directly. You can, you know, speak, uh, you know, directly. You don't have to, you know, get online. If it's your friend, if it's your family, right? Like that's how it grows. That's, I mean, the yeah. city in the Philippines, that's how that happened. Like the whole block, everybody was playing Axie because it's just word of mouth, right? The internet yep. is cool, but you cannot beat word of mouth. So yeah, yeah. Abso- ab- absolutely. And uh, Mr. Gonzo and I did a, did a video with, uh, with Jazz. We lost Sean. Boy, it's a, you know, a real pleasure to actually <laughs> talk in person with, uh, with the community. So on that note, if there's any, body else out there i'd love to have a chat with some people uh, especially in, in south america to to you know learn a bit from from you guys about what what is happening uh, in the crypto space overall uh and in your lives you know we really want to get as many of you on and into the content we're making we're looking at doing some documentary type material uh moving forward here as well fernando so out to us if you are, if you're team. we're talking to you guys we got a couple of good venezuelan scholars actually my two yep. earliest ones i'd love to see those guys on but uh, a spaghetti, he says that his inter- internet connection is really shit, so he can't come on. But uh, Fernando, uh, it would be great to come on. Or there's his cousin, who's also, uh, she's one of the newest scholars. But if anybody's interested in coming on, uh, we'd love yeah, to see please what's happening in Venezuela. Yeah, they're just, I mean, it's, re- it's recorded stuff. It's not live, so you don't need to freak out about that. Uh, and, you know, for, for us, it's a, a, a real pleasure getting to, to know you all. Uh, super enjoyed talking to, to Jazzy. And listen, I just want to give a sh- shout out. You know, I, I really do read every single comment on all of our videos. I do my best to reply to all of you. Um, massively yes. appreciate you you uh, commenting, liking, sharing our, our, our videos. It really does help that other, other people know that we are here. Um, we seem to have a few issues with the logarithm. So it, it is massively appreciated, guys. And, and believe me, it doesn't go unnoticed. So on that note, um, hey, uh, should we have a quick look at the just the, the project review board, and then we'll uh, we'll jump into the first scholarship and a bit of news. While you're doing that, can I pick up the question from Mark? Because obviously we're live for that reason because people are asking questions. Yep. yep. Mark is saying, why does the meme coins affect so much the current prices of the cryptocurrencies? Mark. <laughs> Because we're going completely crazy yeah. nuts and Little the world media. is about to end. Like, <laughs> I mean, the the disconnection of the money supply, you know, it's just everything is exploding out of control. Like people are getting airdrop money from the government. They're taking that airdrop money. They're putting it in crypto. It's going a thousand X. Like there's just no concept of the actual dollar. It's losing its value. Like you can see it happening in 
everything right now. Like it's just, and the marketing and the hype and Elon on fucking Saturday Night Live and this, this is a crazy shit happening right now. We, but we are in like, that moment. Well, today's where... fun. Today's fun day. We can't talk good though. Today's fun day. That's true. Today we're all sad because the market is about to die and, and end. But tomorrow <laughs> we're gonna go back on on green. Food mission uh, resume. We we are in that moment where uh, you know everybody thinks that everything is gonna go crazy. There is no logic. It's just pure FOMO. You know, uh, everybody wants to find the next Dodge coin, the next Team <laughs> coin because it's it's fun. So Dodge coin had that advantage that it's a meme so people always took that like very light they were never like a an aggressive way against dodge because it's a meme it's fun everybody loves like to have a laugh and and a joke and stuff like that the problem is that now it's turning out to be like it's the same thing that we saw like with crypto punks like with where we have like copycat of the copycat of the copycat of the copycat um here is the same thing now we got like all the meme coins and and all of that can i just like say one thing that yesterday or the day before i don't remember like if it's 24 or 48 hours uh, uh, ago there is one person one individual that proves once again who runs the real blockchain projects in the space and i'm talking about vitalik, vitalik. Because Vitalik shows specifically what it means being in for the tech and not caring at all about anything. Yeah. Do you want to quickly explain what he did? Sure. Basically, like, what happened is that, like, as you know, like all the dog coins uh, are going like completely crazy. Everybody's like going uh, ballistic on finding the next Doge coin, and there is like the, the also Shiba making your shit. guess uh, fees go through the roof. That's also true. Um, That's another conspiracy. And- oh. The conspiracy of the network being spammed by uh, not so nice players. That's true as well. Like that, that there, is, there is a lot over there. But let's let's focus to the important thing. That is like as you probably noticed after Doge, there was like the the Shiba uh, coin that became like very popular. So popular that some centralized players um, have decided to list it that that specific coin. And so the community of that specific token has decided to gift and like literally send a tsunami of free tokens to Vitalik, hoping for a shield by Vitalik itself. They sent so much money (laughs) that literally the value of that token, that of that position of the airdrop that got sent to Vitalik reached one billion dollars. Shut the fuck up. I, I want this, wow. like, everybody to take a second and think about, like, what would you do for $1 billion? Like, we're talking about, like, a $1 billion. What so, would you do for a $1 billion, Stefano? I, I don't know. I would probably... If someone airdropped it to my wallet for nothing, I would fucking sell it. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. They, they were expecting him to shill. Would you actually shill that name if someone gives you a billion dollars and in return you just have to say, I love this? I would say I love it so much I'm selling it all right now. Pretty pretty much. Like I would say that is my use favorite it, thing if someone more, gives you a billion dollars. Like let's be use honest. Use it to build more utility and use case for Ethereum. So and what like, happened? No, the cryptocurrency community. Not fucking meme coin, uh, steal all your money through bullshit. But that's the thing. Like, let, let, let's let's remember that. Let's let's have a look at what is <laughs> happening. We got like Elon Musk shilling. We got like uh, Binance uh, listing Shiba coin. We got like craziness on the meme coins, like all of that things. And they send a billion dollars to Vitalik. So this is the gameplay. They're expecting Vitalik to enter the meme coin gang and structure and so on. Instead, Vitalik is Vitalik. So what does Vitalik do? Without saying anything to anybody, give away in charity the entire billion dollars worth of token to the no-profit organization that is fighting COVID in India. He cannot care less about shilling the token. He cannot care less of taking the profit. On that he- note, people, not financial advice but sell your freaking Dodge coins and buy some Ethereum. Who's the good guy here, Vitalik 
or Elon? Pretty I mean, clear cut. Come on, Vitalik has dropped in the biggest chat game or a play of the entire space. Like, I'm sorry, but like, this is absolutely crazy. Vitalik wins everything this and year. Then... Vitalik is the man of the year. Like, I don't care about anything else. Yeah. The Dogecoin is up 25% right now. I know. Doesn't that freak you out? Well, that really, really upsets me. I mean, look, for, for those of you that don't know, and I, I'm sure most of you do, but for anyone that has no idea what's just gone down, we, we had this from, from Elon Musk uh, yesterday. Uh, it, it, it crashed the market. Um, now, the, the reason... I mean, what I find really interesting here, people, is having been in this space for a while, it's just been this war of different communities, absolute, you know, war between BCH, BTC, BSV, Ethereum, and, and the Bitcoiners, on and on and on. Uh, so one thing that sort of Elon Musk seems to have done here is actually unite most different communities uh, as one. Um, what I don't like about what this guy is doing is... He has clearly known how Bitcoin mining works. I mean, this is one of the smarter people on the planet. So to me, this is cold, calculated uh, revenue generating. It, just my opinion here. I mean, I don't know this for a fact. He, he could be a saint, but it doesn't look that way to me. I think he's manipulating people. He's manipulating the market for his own gain. Uh, and it pains me to see the Dogecoin go up even more today. And, you know, and then he's tweeting out, well, Bullshit, it's the back to back. You know. It's the back to back thing. It's like on one hand, he's like, "Oh, Bitcoin is bad for the environment," and then the next fucking tweet, "Oh, I'm talking to the devs at Dogecoin." It's like, yeah, you're fucking so full of shit. On your eyes are full of brown. Yeah, you know? like, I totally like, agree with you, man. I, when I, you I've go just... back to back like that, like you know, he's taking the piss out of the SEC, but now, you know, he's it's working it in his favor. You know, he's like. They said that they sold a bunch of Bitcoin. So now he's flooding it so that they can rebuy cheaper, you know, yeah. and he can say environment because all the, the, the political assholes are, will be like, Oh, see, oh yeah. The, the, you know, the social justice warriors like, see, yeah, Elon's right. Bitcoin sucks. And then it's going to dump and then they're going to rebuy. Right. Like I, to, to be honest, can I actually say something that is completely different from like what majority of people say? I actually took the, the tweet that he wrote as an enormous bullish signal, to be honest. For Bitcoin or Doge? For Bitcoin. About not He's literally payments? saying that instead of moving like short term, has become like a super mega long term holder of Bitcoin. How is that not bullish? Like, look, I mean, part, part of what could be going on here, in my opinion, is. He, there's a hell of a lot of, you know, it's sort of stringing different things together about he's got, you know, a company in, in Austin, Texas. There's Samsung there who are developing, uh, you know, mining capabilities. These other companies that he possibly is involved in a lot, a lot of rumor, a lot of speculation, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if in the very near future he comes forward with a, uh, a clean way of, of of mining Bitcoin and more power to him. You know, I, I've been discussing and debating this from from 2016. You know, around the environmental cost of of uh, mining Bitcoin. A, I don't think it does have this massive massive carbon impact. But what I've also understood from the many many conversations on the topic is that think about it, Bitcoin mining. You've got a competitive advantage if you've got cheap a cheap energy source. So what should that do? It, it, it should propel innovation. It should propel people to actually find the best way to mine Bitcoin with a better energy source. So yeah, wouldn't surprise me to see uh, him and, and one of his companies come out with a solution in the very near future. The, there was um, another guy that I'm not a fan of when he talks about crypto, but uh, Kevin O'Leary, the other, okay. the other shark. <laughs> yeah but hear me out on this hold on a second it's the same playbook you know when you're accumulating you fight it it's, when it's you're on it you fucking pump it it's like but, whale playbook 101 it's true but but let, let, let's try to, to connect the dots for a second so he said actually something very very similar um a couple of weeks ago i think that he's buying according to what he's saying like that's that's 
take uh, obviously like the public information. According to what he's saying, he's mentioning that he's buying only and exclusively from regulated clean US miners. And so what he is mentioning in that specific interview is the fact that he's saying that in his opinion, we're gonna have like two type of, of Bitcoin. One of them is gonna be considered coming from a clean energy source. And the other one that is coming from, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Non-fungi Bitcoins. Pretty much. Correct. Now we're getting like, you know, the solar roof from Elon and like all of that things. Elon that goes into that direction. It could be, as Sean was mentioning, it could be a perfect plug and so on. Like, I don't see that being completely crazy. And that again, to me, goes into a bullish signal, to be honest. Can you imagine that these people for a second are really going to like try to divide Bitcoin into clean Bitcoin and unclean Bitcoin? And they're mentally really thinking like, oh, yeah, we're going to separate the market between the two. And they're not mixed, never mixed together. Like, well, you can throw on top of that Bitcoin that's been through mixes as well. That's the other conversation that's been happening. Oh, yeah. That, then we have now. that tinted and non-tinted. Like we're going to end up with like a marketplace in the US that has 100 Bitcoin in total. Well, we will we already do. And we already do. I mean, ultimately, uh, Doge is a fork of Bitcoin. So I believe it's a fork of Litecoin, which is a fork of Bitcoin. So it's the same code. Um, say, you know, whether or not he's, he, he, you know, I, I don't like this tweet today. I'm talking to the Doge devs about, you know, what? improving transaction capabilities. Uh, you know, look. You didn't see that one, Stefano? Yeah, no, I saw oh. that. But why is that that you don't like it? But he's trolling. Because he basically but is the thing he's taking. Big, he's, he's trying to invent it. You know, you know, it. He's got a troll saying, oh, I'm talking to the Dogecoin devs. And yeah. then the, the previous one is like, oh, I'm all environmental. And, you know, Bitcoin is bad for the environment. It's like, you know, he's like playing the noobs, right? Like totally. 95% of the noobs that see that dev uh, Dogecoin thing are like, oh, bullish, yeah. And they haven't done any research and they have no idea that there are no fucking devs for Dogecoin. Yeah, but, but, right. but, but here's the thing. So, so sorry for that for that point. I, I don't want to like go on, on Elon's side, to be honest, but I actually want to try. Don't do that. Because it, no, I, I will try because it's a nice conversation. <laughs> well, so, a, balanced, a balanced argument. Yeah, that's the thing. So you got on one side what we mentioned multiple times. And I mean, I'm a big believer that if you're an idiot, <laughs> you're going to lose your money. And so, you know, are you going to lose your money from CZ fighting or, or fumbling into something or Elon Musk doing the same thing or another or Paris Hilton or Lindsay Lohan or, you know, whatever. Like those- if, if you're an idiot, you're going to lose your money by default. By gonna lose but you look money. like an idiot if you're inexperienced sometimes. Yeah, but OK, but, no, but then right? like, you know, not everybody's an idiot. There are people that are just inexperienced that haven't you know, got through that idiot phase yet because they're so new. Okay. Right? And, you know, that's, that's exactly the point. Do you take your information by someone that knows absolutely nothing? The worst thing about is to blockchain? be a new idiot is what, what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. If you're an idiot and you're new, then yeah, you're in trouble. But if you're legit, like looking at this stuff, right. And you, you're going to say Elon Musk is not a smart guy to follow. Right? No, he's, a smart, he's a smart guy, but he's the same exactly conversation that we had about like, and me not being like so sold off on the thing that like Mark Cuban is being all pro crypto. Mm-hmm. What does he know about crypto? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but like with all the respect, just because one is absolutely a genius and a monster in a specific field, it doesn't make that person a genius in everything. Of course not. I know. So listen, I, I like, look at, at he's its so core. Dumb. He thinks Doge has dev, devs. Yeah, at its has... core, can you not see what's going on here? I mean, obviously, anybody. This is the beauty of open source. This is the beauty of blockchain. You can you can hard fork something. You can literally, you know, we could we could launch a hard forking coin tomorrow. Take with using a replica of Bitcoin, effectively. So what I'm kind of seeing here is that we've got a doge 30 percent of of the the tokens in that project are owned by one freaking entity people most likely one person uh possibly him uh he's certainly got one hell of a stack uh, if it's if it's not him i just see you know the beauty of this space and you know stefano is is probably one of the biggest proponents of this uh decentralization DeFi. um but really what we see here is a is a godlike figure to a community 
It wouldn't surprise me if he is almost trying to alienate everyone else and therefore make his Doge community super strong and vitriolic and 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 behind it uh, as he slowly milks them for uh, for new revenue to build another space rocket. What, what if it's apart. just a troll and a meme? What if he what if he owns no bigger position than anybody else in Doge? I'm I'm Bitcoin? supporting the thing. What I own no Doge. Though? Huh? What about Bitcoin? He's on, the on, on that note, did, huge did, Bitcoin positions and he's manipulating that market. Yeah, well. but but did he, there, there are two things on that. One, he owns a bigger bag than all three of us put together, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, he's the guy that is now putting the price down on, on 10%. So, you know, it's kind of like shooting on his own foot. So once again, I don't think that this is like straight line, like he's, he's fighting and so on. Like it, it, I don't buy that. Why would you actually foot on, shoot on your own foot? Best it's comment a- in the chat from Abby, Elon Musk buys billions of dollars of Bitcoin, does his research months later. <laughs> but on, on that note, actually, I have a generally question. Did anybody, because he announced that like you were able to buy Tesla with Bitcoin, yeah. Was that thing actually implemented? Yeah. Yes, it was on so the website. Th- so people were able, did someone actually bought with Bitcoin? Somebody, I, yeah, I think they did. I mean, he said they're stopping the payments, so it must have been enabled. I yeah, actually know, I have a friend on Twitter who was right about to buy a Tesla with uh, crypto and he canceled his order after that last tweet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'm be- I mean, like, that That could also be, like, because c- that's the thing. Like, why isn't the SEC involved in all of this? That's... Ah, BTC- he's been mocking them. Can I, I just have to point this out. The week's biggest mover at this stage is Hedera, Hedera Hashgraph. Uh, and I just found this super, super duper funny. But uh, it once again appears to be the uh, another famous person that is tweeting this out. A guy called Deepak Chopra. Do you guys know who he is? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. He's like a yogi guy, right? Oh, he's a guru. I've actually read a few of his books. I do kind of like the guy, but uh, it, it just it just made me giggle when I saw he was actually re- replying to an Elon Musk uh, tweet. Here is here's this guy here. Deepak Chopra, who's got 3.2 million followers. So he's uh, tweeted out, Elon, Hedera is the public network to build your sustainable future on. Oh, my network God. consumes only blah, blah, blah. Our mission is to build a peaceful, just, sustainable, healthy, and joyful world. Wow. Let's partner. And so what happened to Hedera? That's crap's freaking price. <laughs> Okay. What Why is it? Not? How much like how much is that? <laughs> I dear. Anyway. Hey, you know what's up? Also up 40% right now? SLP. SLP is yes. up 40% right now. And that is much better news. All our scholars are gonna be super happy about that. Hey guys. Hey. No, it's not because it's still the old contract. <laughs> I know, but if there's some scholars that have, might be able to get their uh SLP over there. It's definitely hard to do, and it's going to cost you a lot in fees. But SLP, please point. don't don't do that. Like Binance is still not supporting the new contract. They, it's still going on like five or six cents on Uniswap. Like we're, those values are completely off. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I don't know. I, I don't get it. What's happening with it? And I'm really just. Well, they're they're waiting for for. A... See that they might hate to be that guy, but. You know how, like, with all the new SLP, the new contract, if you're sending that, they're lost forever. Uh, old SLP in circulation could be pumping up, could be like a store for the new one before closing the contract. Big return on, on Binance. Like, man, when I'm thinking about Binance, there is really like the, the evil of the evil coming out of, of, of possibilities. Like, it's yeah. insane. Well, can we just quickly see another examples of that? Touch like, on that, actually. Like, remember Bonk? They had the same thing. They had to migrate the old token to a new one. And what did they do? They locked the sales. 
So you didn't have the situation. Why? Because Seals is a legit dude. Yeah. He's not like he's not trying to rip people off and people fudding him because he's taking time to like help people out that miss a deadline and shit. That's bullshit. And then this is the exact same situation, except for you got fucking Binance in the middle of it, trying to squeeze every cent out of it, these guys. You know, it's yeah. just it's so dirty. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. The Shiba, hey, let's list Shiba under innovation. Because <laughs> yeah, why worried. not? Read. How worried should people be about uh, the the news coming out this morning uh, about the IRS and Justice Department looking into Binance? In your opinion, Look, you are our legal expert. What what I wish and what is really going to be the end game on that are two very different things. Because what I wish... Let's I talk think- about people that have money on Binance first who might be a bit worried reading, and I'd put myself in that category. Don't worry too much uh, about you, that. I know you have a very good knowledge of legislation, law around See, the space. The thing is that, like, uh, we, we, by the way, what is new about what is happening? Didn't we mention exactly this thing, like, a few months ago? Like, once again, like, oh, surprise! Who could have known about that? Hey, Mark, if you're going to pull this, by the way, huh? keep in mind that this time you need to tag us. But the point is that, um, look, there is no news here because we knew about this thing, that it was going to happen sooner or later. We say that things like that, that the RS was going and the SEC were going to start knocking the doors on, on a lot of these companies because there are clear violations. On the other side, Binance is Godzilla in the space. <laughs> so, you know... Who's King Kong? Tether, probably. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's our other bit of FUD that we'll get to in a second. No, that's true. That's true. But, but, but let's, here- let's just deal. I mean, we're not giving financial advice here, but do you think there anyone that has funds on Binance, do you think they should be concerned in your personal no, opinion? Not I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Because, because of the size that Binance has, I think that the IRS will be very so here's the thing binance is an enormous therefore like they're gonna get like the best lawyers in the space and the best lawyers in the space are there only for one job and one job alone settle not to win to settle which means that they're gonna receive a fine uh could be a substantial fine don't take me wrong i I doubt they're making it'll be nothing exactly and that's the thing like here you go you want double? No problem. Yeah. We can still keep doing what we're doing. Cool. Here's triple. This is basically like what we see with banks. HSBC, JP Morgan, Goldman, like all of these banks that are getting fines over and over, you know, banks like HSBC, they got like uh, obliged of paying like how many hundreds of millions because of like uh, racketeering trafficking of laundering money and, and all of that stuff. Um, and it's a bank. And it's like, yeah, there it is. Done. 100 million, eh, you want another one? Come back next year, it's okay. So, you know, am I worried about this? No. Uh, do I wish for them to all go to jail and finally end this thing once and for all? Yes, I really do, because it's it's irritating that, like, this proves how unequal the world is. If you have the resources, if you're big, if you have the money, the law is not the same for you because you just pay your fine and, and you're off the hook. What could happen, however, if the IRS then gets into with the SEC and they start like being a little bit more aggressive and they want to take like Binance as, a, as an example, it might be that, you know, they're going to be like a little bit more heavy on all the, the U.S. people. Already like people cannot in the U.S. cannot jump into um, Binance on like, you know, the the launchpad, the IEO and like all of that stuff, they might actually like take that as, a, as an option to go even more aggressive on, uh, on the exchange and so on. This mm. could be could be another hook on that storyline of tinted Bitcoin or clean Bitcoin that are being mined in, uh, in the US with energy efficiency, with, you know, only trading and regulating people in the US. Like it might be like, that entire soup that is coming, that there is going to be a new regulation coming in for uh, for the U.S. citizens. 
but I wouldn't really not be worried on, on Binance going on there. Okay, very very good. Just one other thing that is worrying a lot of people. I want to get both of your opinions on. Um, obviously, the, the Tether FUD has been around as long as I've been in this industry. Basically, really quick overview here, people. Tether was initially developed for uh, to enable... Uh, effectively better price discovery between initially two exchanges, but Bitfinex and I believe it was Kraken. Uh, that's how the whole thing came about. It enabled you to move uh, out of Bitcoin uh, when, when it kind of was just Bitcoin around at the time and not have to exit back into fiat. So in other words, it was to, to enable you to, to trade effectively. So you think Bitcoin's going down, you move into Tether, so then that go back in uh, at a lower price. Um, obviously, we know that it has grown significantly to billions and billions of dollars. So today they put this statement out about uh, their cash reserves because legally they're meant to be backed one to one. Um, I, I think that's always been extremely questionable for people. It appears like they have invested in other projects with some of that money as well. I, I guess legally they can, as soon as they're declaring it here. But it has sort of thrown that uh, that, that fud out there again that maybe tether you know if there was effectively a run on the bank what would happen so i guess what i wanted to hear from both of you is um how potentially so let's say you've got some money on binance but you're in a usdt pair um the market corrects hit massively everyone decides to go into into a stable coin um do you potentially see any issues with tether what what uh, what could happen in that scenario does it concern you No. Could you lose your Bitcoin if there was a run for everyone to get into Tether and they go, fuck, hang on, there is no Tether. <laughs> there is no Tether. <laughs> no, of course you cannot lose your, your Bitcoin. Look, uh, how many millions of paper of pages did, did But Tether how does it work? So the, you so, your... so explain to me then, how does it work? So you move, you, uh, move your Bitcoin mm -hmm. onto Binance or whatever exchange. Mm -hmm. Um and maybe you trade, you're trading it with a USDT pair. Mm -hmm. um, USDT all of a sudden is found, let's hypothetically, uh, a regulator says, sorry guys, you know, you, you clearly aren't backed here. Uh, how would that potentially affect your holding of a Bitcoin or any other thing that you would have in a USDT pair on an exchange? No, that's... So you've that, moved that... the asset to an exchange, it's pair, it's in a USDT pair that you're trading. Yeah, um, that, that's that's not the case so if if well the only if, thing that could happen is if you're all in usdt and some catastrophic flood comes around and everybody dumps all their tether at the exact same time and then it's enough to actually move the tether market that it becomes 80 cents or whatever like we've seen that happen before that's that's the risk right but then mm. you see that that's happened a couple of times where tether actually dumps but it yes, recovers right away right mm. i mean i think that that seems like the only risk, isn't it? Okay, but that would be if you yeah. were just sitting in USDT. So you had sold your Bitcoin to sit in USDT. But if you were in a trading pair, so you're, you know, you're, you've moved your, but you're your not in Bitcoin both. to a trading account in a USDT pair. Yeah, but you, well, it works in the same way that like if you're in a pair on like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you are in a position where like you're not in the both at the same yeah, time. You're in Bitcoin you are in US Bitcoin and you are considering your relation of going on winning or losing or making more or less based mm. on the exchange uh, of the value of the other pair. So mm. normally, why would you be on a pair on on Bitcoin and USDT? Sure. Is because so of you're not you're not exposed to to that. To USDT is what you're saying. Yeah, I no, mean, I mean, it, you it, can sort of... be exposed. Like that, that's the thing. You could be exposed if 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 that are all of the sun and goes down to like fifty cents, then your your Bitcoin on the pair that you are would allow you to buy double amount of USDT. In the same way that like you you need yeah, to think true. of like a, a tether USDT equal to one dollar. If the value of tether moves, then it works exactly in the same way that if you're in another pair, but mm. Could that happen? Like, because that's that's the point. We also need to, to be specific on, on these type of things. Can you have a situation where Tether goes down after the fine that they pay in New York? I don't see that going. That we can debate. Like, do we believe that Tether is fully backed? Um, I still don't, but I don't see that going down anytime soon. Yeah, there's the two conversations. Are they going to go down 
or are they legit? It's two different things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, we've I think we've addressed all the, the uh, FUD here, people. We want your questions. We're really trying to turn this Friday show into a very interactive uh, show. We know many of you uh, show up for for the, uh, for the for the Axie scholarships, and that, that's fantastic. We're, you're you're more than welcome. But please get involved. We want to help you learn more about play to earn and blockchain and crypto in general. So on that note, we're going to start taking some questions, and the best ones are going to want a prize. So bring it on, people. Has there been any good ones so far? No. Because <laughs> there have been not, not a lot of questions. That's the problem. Come like, on, we, people. we didn't have questions. There was a question, Johnny, why so combed? It's because I got a haircut. That's why. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Where do you get your haircut? That's a, that's a good question. My bathroom. Yeah, is it nice? Do you do you take appointments for that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Sherry Klein. I want to know how much percentage the shib may have. Huh? Hmm. What we percent? Don't understand that question. Who Can you rephrase it? Sherry, it depends who you're referring to. If you're referring to Vitalik, zero, because he gave everything away. <laughs> and that's the only news that we care about. Okay, we're going to have a very quick look at our project review board, just to give some shout outs to the companies, projects that have uh, supported this channel. When, and that's going to take a couple of minutes. So fire your questions in now. Easy. I mean, imagine if you're the only one that asks a question, you're probably going to win. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it. Right. What's lots been going of, down? Lots Everything. of red this week. Lots of red, except There's for Hex. Of red there. Hex, Hex, Hex. Hex is pumping, Sean. Damn. It sure is. Wow, look at that. 16X. Look at that. Looky, looky. So, uh, I've asked Richard Hart. I sent him a message yesterday, by the way, asking him to come back on the channel. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully we can get him. Mr. Gonzo, I know you that were the is, early adopter of, of Hex. Have you tell us about your your uh, your position there? I mean, you bought you bought it right at the start, eh? Yeah, the first day in the adoption amplifier. And then I bought a couple more times over the span of that year when it was really low because my first buy was way too high. But yeah, like I mean, I it's still sitting in there haven't done anything with it it's still uh accruing value with uh, t shares and all that stuff so it's just a like no no opinion on it just let it go let it run what are the t shares by the way i've been trying to figure that out we'll ask richard your position talk. is it a separate thing to the to the token i haven't withdrawn <laughs> anything or taken anything out so i don't know man Be we, if any, anyone from Hex watching this, please uh, please help us out here. And uh, well, we're going to try and get Richard back on to explain what's going on. Hell of a lot happening on that project. Uh, whipping through these people. Uh, what's of note? Pirate Chain, another 30% move. A mere 12,000% gain since we got the $200 worth of it. What does that tell you about crypto people looking at these numbers? Uh, it's all about your entry, all about timing. We're in a pretty overcooked market at the moment. That's not to say that there aren't still good investments out there, but when it all goes to custard and it's a bear market, I hope there's a lesson here looking at this board. Not that, that many of these were picked up in a bear market. Uh, that's the yeah. time to get into good projects. Right. Well, it kind of was because most of our stuff was from like, you know, September till the December, January, right? And yeah. which was pretty much a bear market inside the bull market, right? If you look at it historically on a long time frame, it won't look like a bear market. But when we were in it, it seemed like a bear market. This is true. Right? It's all about time frames. Yeah. Right? Like today's a bear market. So <laughs> how many, how many in the red have we got for overall gains or losses? I I think we've had one well, we've had a rug pull, we've had a failed SEC 
intervention project with DMM. Cyber uh, we pretty much bought the top on that one. We got the top, right? And then yeah. ethanol, which is, is that dead yet? Oh, hell no. It's up uh, 11% this week. And then still alive, doing stuff. What's the other one that's red? Modify is down also. Yeah, we also got into that pretty high in the cycle. Mantra Dow down 4% overall. So, you know, we got a couple projects and those are the most recent ones, obviously, right? Mm. And those are the ones that we bought in, not necessarily, or we didn't buy, but we got donated and the market value was up because it was in a bull market. So, yeah. you know, I mean, they're, they're still pretty good projects, but they're just in the wrong time of the cycle. Yeah. So I, I, I guess sort of my, my two cents worth on this uh, for, for newbies watching, you know, yes, we're in a, a, a very clear bull run at the moment. And, you know, you've seen some crazy, crazy returns, but learn about uh-huh. crypto because these bull runs don't last. Um, you know, God knows how long this one will go on for. It could be over tomorrow. Elon Musk might really fuck it up. But, you know, a bear market is, is really a great opportunity if you have understood what is going on. Obviously, we're this is very much a play to earn show, this, this one. But as I say, we're here to help you on the overall space. We want you to get ahead. Uh, you know, we've got a bit of experience here. So we're here to help you all. So please ask us good questions. That's why well, we, we might do... be in a super cycle, by the way. We could. We could. Do you think we could be? Mm, so I had yesterday a call with... Um... Quick, quickly explain to people what you mean by super cycle. So super cycle means that we're not going to do on the traditional path of basically like ending the bull run by the end of this year in super simple, but that the bull run is going to like keep going on for, for much longer, potentially like a two, even three more years from now. <laughs> by having that, it means that like the price uh, of the entire market will go, will keep going up as well. So instead of like, for example, seeing a Bitcoin going like at 100K, we might potentially see Bitcoin going at like a million dollars because we're in a super cycle. And so we will jump to the next bull run directly in terms of like numbers and so on. Um, so yesterday I was in the phone call with a guy that works for a big bank. Um, I can't do names, unfortunately, but it's a guy that moves a lot of money. Let's let's put it like that. And we were chit-chatting and everything, and we were obviously talking about Ethereum. And he, not me, he dropped that in his opinion, we are in a super cycle and Ethereum will go at one hundred fifty thousand dollars on which I start laughing my ass off because I don't believe in that. But, um, you know. What? Yeah. You don't believe that? You you, you got me to move most of mine and my assets into Ethereum. I, I don't believe, believe it's not going to reach 150. It's the only reason I'm here, Stefano. I know, I know. Sorry. Will. We will go there. It we will. will go in your it opinion. It will, but it's not because ETH is going to be worth that much. It's because the dollar is going to be worth shit. Yeah, what, what is that? Are you gonna buy a burger with hundred and fifty thousand yeah, well, dollars? Exactly it. That's what's happening. That's what's gonna happen. As in like, Venezuela. As hello, the, this is a liter of milk. Two millions. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, look at you know some of the weaker economies in the world. They're not getting into Bitcoin for speculation. They're getting into it to preserve their capital, to, yeah, to preserve their true. buying power, that's right? True. So it doesn't, that, matter. No, it doesn't matter what the dollar value equation is. It's what you can buy with it, you know? Mm. Like, it doesn't... Two buildings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you... Yeah, if there's anyone here from South America in the chat, I, I'm really interested to know how familiar you are with MakerDAO and the DAI token because I'm hearing that a huge amount of capital in South America is moving into that project. Uh, if there's anyone that could uh, shed any light on that, that may be from that part of the world that is watching this uh, or watching it at a later date, please put a comment. I'm, I'd love to know more, but that's what I'm hearing. I'd love, uh, yeah, love a bit of clarification on that. Um, there's a couple of questions here. Yep. There's some good ones now, actually. Yep. So you want to, you got one there, Sean? Uh, well, Jazzy, our good friend, Jazzy, the banks offer cryptocurrencies. Jazzy, uh, there is uh, a bank in Singapore that does at the moment. There is for pri- talk of sorry, about sorry, 100. For private clients, not for retails. Like we're sure. not there yet. 
there is a big difference. You need yep. millions of dollars to be able to jump into these things right now. It's, it's, it's coming at a retail level. Um, and that may well take us into a super cycle, in my opinion, because having helped many, many new people to the space, there is that utter fear of, I just don't understand this. Uh, anything new, they're too scared, you know, especially with their hard earned value, their money. Uh, it's just this, the tech is too difficult. So to be able to do it with their traditional online banking that's just around the corner, that to me causes a super cycle, it really does. Um, so that, that, uh, that is underway, Jazzy. Absolutely. We, in fact, we covered this last week, I think. We looked at um, some news that 100 US retail banks are, are looking at rolling that out. So, you know, the, the integration of, of the blockchain world, uh, DeFi and traditional finance is, you know, we're seeing the early buds of that. Uh, yes, it's going to be a rocky, rocky road, but yeah, it is underway, Jazzy. Um, we've got somebody here from Argentina. Hey, Abby. Good to see you here. Abby has an awesome uh, meme she put into the Discord. It goes, it's got a funny little creature and it says, Axie's looking kind of weird after Ronin migration. <laughs> it's funny. I think that's a, a good little a good little meme. Is it posted on Twitter? I didn't see it on Twitter though. That's a good one though. Yeah. Oh, Abby asks, will blockchain gaming change forever how the gaming industry behaves with their clients? In brackets, us. Thoughts, Mr. Gonzo? No doubt. It's the same thing that's happening in DeFi, right? Like yep. what you're getting is a redistribution of wealth and profit. So instead of the bank getting all the cuts, you're getting the people with the money making the profits because they're providing the capital. So they're eliminating the middleman. And the video game industry is the same as banking. There's you know a couple massive publishers. And if you're not in with those massive publishers and then the massive game developer houses, then you have a really tough time getting a market share. But if you build a strong community and you reward them, people are going to start migrating. We're already seeing that happen in the couple of play to earn games that we're involved with and more soon. Um, it's definitely changed gaming already, I think, and it will yep. continue. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a pleasure for us to, uh, to, to be involved in Axie so early and as, as, uh, Mr. Gonzo has just alluded to, we've got some secret announcement news, announcement of the announcement. We've already the done that today, but announced. there's more he's, on the way, people. We're so uh, Daisy, Daisy, Daisy asks, what, what is SHIB, sir? SHIB uh, is actually misspelt. There's meant to be a T on the end, not, not a B. Uh, that's <laughs> what that is. <laughs> there's, some, there's some interesting shit coins popping up. There's Doge Dow. There's Fuck Elon now. Fuck Elon is an actual ERC-20 that's Oh, oh, I'll buy some of that. <laughs> it's for his Poor only Elon. Time. Why is everybody so aggressive when you look? I know. It's Angry Fridays. Angry Fridays. There's a very specific Axie question in there from Kitten Dust, who last year, last week, remember, was super active in the... In oh, Kitten Dust got the team last week, no? Uh, no, he didn't get the team last week, but oh. he got put forth by some of the other community members because um, that's kind of how... I've chosen to do it now because, you know, it's a bit random. So there's a bit of like an internal screening process where, you know, if you're part of the Discord, you're, act you're active, uh, you're helpful to other people, you know, and you follow the rules and stuff. And, yep. um, you know, if you get nominated, then you get a new scholarship. So Kitten does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to piss Stefano okay. off here, uh, Ronald, by, by posing his question to you, because he has actually addressed this many, many times in the last few months, but I'm going to get him to do it again very, very briefly. Because uh, for people that don't know, it is a good question. Uh, Ronald asks, what will happen to L Layer 2 projects once ETH 2 comes into action? Short and sweet, Stefano. They're all going to die because Ethereum is the only mantra that you need in don't your life. Don't say that because I've got a stack of Matic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, they're going to survive. They're actually going to survive because the, the usage and it's it's completely different. Um, Ronald, that, that that's a spaghetti, right? That's the same guy. Oh, is is spaghetti? Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. So the the way that it works is that like when when 2.0 is gonna come along, sharding will not be available uh, out of the door. So it's gonna take like a long time. And so at the beginning, layer two is gonna be better than layer one, but it's not gonna be that um, you know El Dorado land, that the promised land of nine hundred thousand transactions per second. Sharding will enable that. 
And layer twos are just going to become one of the of the shard. Basically, they're going to be integrated over there, and uh, and they're going to create the entire 2.0 ecosystem. Now, for the layer twos that that are proper layer twos, as so I'm talking about, like Polygon, for example, for the side chain, like you know, out of the box, I can think about copycats of Testnet. They're going to burn and die. And that's it. Okay, on that note, it's a good segue. Uh, I'll let you answer this one, Mr. Gonzo. Cedric asks, where is the best place to put coins, Ledger or Binance? <laughs> None of the two. <laughs> Trezor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> None of the, the two. The answer is Trezor. You know, like Ledger has had those uh, data breaches with the privacy, you know, like people are still getting spammed and death threats about you know, where they live and all that KYC information that got leaked. Uh, Trezor hasn't had that issue. Binance is a centralized exchange. So not your keys, not your coins. The question between a hardware wallet and a centralized exchange, it's pretty easy. Now, to further answer your question, you can go, we actually have a website as well, people. Um, you can jump on there and you can go to get a wallet. And... You can, uh, the nice little graphic there from Mr. Gonzo, some of the <laughs> early work he did for us. And you can order a Tracer, click there. Tracer, that's the one we recommend over Ledger. And uh, yeah, leaving your, your, your coins on, on Binance, they're there for trading people. Only be on an exchange if you are trading. If you're not, put them in a wallet, put them under a bed, forget about them for three years, and then get a Lambo. That's how it works, right? Tesla truck. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some comedy head nodding going on here, but yeah, that is actually how it works. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Come on. Let's uh, let's make the people happy here. And there's some good questions coming in. It's quite hard to pick so far, but we do need to give a team away. Otherwise, we'll be here all night again. So, what else we got? What do you think about Donkey launching today? Stay away. That's what I say. From George. Donkey. donkey. Oh, this is this DeFi thing, right? I don't, I don't know. Seems like a legit project. What's it's all about. I don't know. What, what's happening now is like all the shiny lights, right? Shall we have a quick look at Donkey's uh, web page? Let's we can, do it. George? Where do we find it? Everything is a bright and shiny. New... George, can you tell us, uh, maybe post a link? We'll, uh, we'll have a look at that right now for you. Donkeydick.io. Actually, shout out to George. He, uh, he, he's, a, he's a bit of an unsung hero of our community. He posts the, uh, the links to, to our shows all over Facebook on the regular. So that is massively appreciated, George. All right. Thanks, George. Well, I think, that, I think Facebook shut him down for a few days because he does it too often. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Spam. Oh, here, look. There was a bunch of questions about um, SLP. <laughs> I want to pay for my groceries in SLP. Stefano, I, do you want to quickly bring up uh, what? We'll get Mr. Gonzo to look at questions. Let's have a quick look at Donkey. Sure, if I can find it. Uh, George, have you, have you got a ticker symbol? Uh, donkey Lounge Sale. I'm wondering what I'm going to find on Google with what I just wrote. <laughs> We're live, Stefano, before you share the screen. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to check Donkey Blockchain. We have Clary. I'm pretty sure it's a DeFi project. Oh, there it is. I think I find it. It's called, yeah, I find it. Mean All token. right, screen share it. Let's have a look to, at Donkey. Quickly. To the moon, isn't it? Is, is this one? Wait, wait. Um, how do I do this technology thing? There was a quick question there from Clary. She was asking about if getting an ETH miner is a profitable way to get ETH. No. Don't, don't do it right now. <laughs> do no. Not, don't even bother because it's all shipping. To well, they're getting rid of the mining, but uh, yeah. one, of the, one, of, one of the guys who is probably in the chat right now has actually done really, really well out of his ETH mining in the last no, week. So with the, with the 14th of July, you, 1559 will be implemented, which means the 70% of your revenue will be gone already. And by the end of the year, uh, the merge will happen. 
hopefully, finger crossed that that really it will be shipped by, by the end of the year. But at that point with the merge, um, no more mining. So you're left with uh, an hard fork that potentially will happen. Um, that at that point is the equivalent of basically mining uh, Ethereum Classic. So uh, who is going to use that? You know, because that there is also that thing. I don't. I cannot think of any developer that will want to stick on the POW uh, pre 1559 or pre merge. So no, don't, don't buy a mine. If you want to mine ETH, don't don't do that. Get 32 ETH and and then be a staker. That's that's probably like a better long term play at this point. Yep. Absolutely. Donkey Finance is the eToro for yield farming. Bring it up, man. Screen share it. We'll have a quick look, and then we're going to give the teams away. We, we were attempting to do an hour-long show today. We're already over that, so hang in there, people. I don't know uh, if it's bit... this, but I think it is this, isn't it? The 100% decentralized meme token. Mm. So, by the way, this logo that I'm seeing here, this is the one from ZZZ. This is the logo from the ZZZ token. I don't know Get if it's gold related. Column. To the moon, very soon. What could go wrong, George? <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> Looks amazing. I mean, token I mean, metrics. Uh, about Donkey, decentralized meme token with a purpose. It has a purpose. Aha. Yes, we're off to a flyer. Donkey is 100% decentralized token with a purpose. Built upon a meme-friendly ecosystem, Donkey is working on promoting an open artistic dialogue in the NFT marketplace. Donkey is building a socially charged interactive news channel for crypto enthusiasts. Donkey is developing a digital gaming arcade for Don. Is there anything that is not FOMO right now? Donkey is working on a personalized Donk. Oh, hey, this is winner. Donkey is the same as Shiba Inu, but with. <laughs> oh, man. No, come on. That's good marketing right there. Don, 10 million ERC20 tokens created on a meme friendly ecosystem. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure points. if this is the one he was talking about. I, I, I think there's a donkey ah, finance. Look, as well. look, 25% burn forever through Vitalik. <laughs> <laughs> nope, wrong. Sent the link. Not this is wrong. Yeah, completely wrong. It's not this. Airdrop. Double your donk. Hold your donk. 35% airdrop on 21st May 2021. This is actually happening next week. <laughs> Here you go. Where are we in the bull cycle, Sean? <laughs> Tell me, All right, Sean. if anyone knows anyone from Donkey, ask them to come on the show and talk to us because we, we don't want to sit here and shit on people's projects. Come on and we'll, we'll, we'll we want them it with to, you. On, we want to tell them on their face, isn't it? <laughs> donk, cri donkey Crypto. Play the game of Donk. Coming soon. Is that available? Donk is creating an interactive... It's kind of a fun media. website. I mean, it doesn't look totally scammy. Donk is working on something genius. Is the announcement of the announcement. Oh, the announcement of the announcement. Very good. See? Uh, experience the lifestyle of Donk. This is the wrong one. I know, but it's fun. <laughs> we, well, we've, unco we've uncovered a hidden gem without even realizing it. See? Um, but it is, I don't think it is the one he's talking about. You say Donkey Finance. No, it's definitely not this, isn't it? <laughs> donkey Crypto. Donkey creep is that that calm at least? Like what's the no it doesn't exist. Okay. George, give me the link. Where where is this thing? Donkey fi oh maybe it's donkey dot finance. Wait. Donkey dick? Yeah. Uh... Hey, I heard there's a new one. It's called cum rockets. Oh man, really? It's not even new. And it's oh, Google it. that, please, on a live show and screen share it. It's worth billions. Oh, I think I've been. Okay, wait, wait. There it is. Uh, Abby says he's a donkey dev. He needs a scholarship. Oh, here we it's go. This, this one. Is yeah. How we work, inquire. 
we provide each of our prospective clients with free and impartial advice. Huh? Quote, this, that's what we do. We're donkeys so far. Go, go back, please. What bunch of fucking bullshit? You know, like the setup, crap ass logo set up with all these real professional logos, HSBC. Oh, you're like, oh, Citibank HSBC partners compared to, you know, it's just totally like sneaky marketing right there but i don't understand what he what he does what it's not oh, wait, there, it's there is a video no let's it's watch the video give them a chance oh, okay. <laughs> wait this is my Go on, let's watch the video it's a fucking oh no yeah right it's a gregorator No, there's no way I'm giving my money to that fucking logo. Oh, really? This All those... is an aggregator. No, it's not. It's just a shitty video. It's like the equivalent to going into like an influencer room and name dropping. It's like a visual name dropping thing. They didn't say what anything. What is this about... shit? How's this blockchain? Wrong again. Oh, George is saying that I'm wrong again. God damn oh, it. God. <laughs> George, give me the link. I gave up. <laughs> Can we get off the donkey dick? What are you doing on a donkey dick to begin with? Yeah, well, so speaking of which, actually. George, sure. the... <laughs> is there Yo. anything you want to tell us, Jordan? Let's give this team away, guys. We've, the, the, the audience has patiently listened to our nonsense chat today. Let's let's give back to the community. Okay. Hey, Abby. Okay. Well, hang on. I just answered this one quickly. What's your prediction of crypto Shiba Inu? Will it rise to reach one peso? Uh, I'm not sure yeah. how much one peso is, but probably not. Wait. Uh, what's the value? Well, didn't Vitalik kill the project once and for all? No. Oh. Ah, oh, God damn it. Vitalik, one billion was not enough. Double down, come on. He shorted it on Binance's features. Uh, okay, who's picking the best question today, people? Oh, man, no. No, 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 no. Who the, Markoy, no, 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 no. What? Don't. Look at the value of, uh, of Shiba right now. 0. 0.00002. USD, which is like a pesos is around 40. 40 pesos is around like one uh, USD, which means that it's like 0 0.0008 uh, right now in terms of value. It means that you need to do like a, th a 10,000 X. Like, no, it's not going to happen. I don't see this like flying a 10,000 X after all of this already. Look, people, we are, just to reiterate, we said it at the top of the show, we're, we're in a real frothy part of this market now. I had dinner last night with some, some cousins of mine. They're, they're younger, and they were just throwing some crazy projects. You know, it was always the same conversation. So-and-so told me about this thing. What do you think of it? You know, I'm going on there, and the, these are projects worth point multiple zeros of a, of a cent, which is designed to lure you in to begin with, thinking, well, it's not even worth a cent. Surely it's going to go to a cent. Doesn't work like that to begin with. And then you got to look at their, you know, the, uh, I always have a look at the, you know, the community, how many people are engaging on Twitter, et cetera. This one had 60,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, but then you look how many people were engaging in a tweet. It was like two or three. There's loads of scammers out there at the moment, people. In fact, uh, George, who's in the chat, uh, sent me uh, a very elaborate scam for uh, from look like a BBC website, you know, usual story, send them some crypto, they'll send you twice as much back. Just be super careful, A, investing in things at the moment, B, the amount of scams that are going around. Um, yeah, so super cycle possibly for Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I can assure you uh, the bubble is going to burst on so many of these other projects in, in the not too distant future. Careful. Sorry, it's 47.8 on the pesos on conversion. So we're looking at pretty much like a, a 5,000 X from here to reach one peso in value. 
if we're in a super cycle, maybe yes. But if that happens, then everything else would do the same growth. It's not that like the alpha of Shiba is going to be better than than anything else. So I, I would not bother. Gray Denarius, which wallet is best for Ethereum, Stefano? Uh, depends. If you want to like interacting and so on, uh, MetaMask is a good one. I use the Brave wallet, to be honest, because I, I use Brave. Um, otherwise, if you want to like store and not interact like on Web3 and so on, uh, the Trezor. Yeah. Hands down, the Trezor. Yeah, get a, get a Trezor, people. Stick it away at your bank account. Put it safely somewhere. Only leave your coins on exchanges if you are trading them. Uh, regulation is on the way. Who knows what could happen to some of these exchanges? Okay. Oh, it's true. Are this year ready? didn't happen yet. Huh? Back in 2017, we did add the direct pull from the exchanges. This year, we didn't see no, that No, we yet. haven't. Yeah, it's very true. That was it was literally a weekly thing back then, wasn't it? Rug pulls, yeah. hacks. Not yet. No, yeah, yet. that's the thing. Exactly. We do one. <laughs> this is why we are early. Super cycle confirm. <laughs> <coughs> Absolutely. Okay. We're we're gonna give a team away in the next couple of minutes, but we need some good questions here, people. How is it working? Who's picking? What? I think well, we'll guys. all do it in unison. You guys are big. Okay. Well, I want to give a Abby a scholarship. Yeah. Wow. Well, Abby, I thought, I, I just assumed Abby had one. Nope. But if not, yeah, Abby's, uh, Abby's thrown out a ton of interesting questions today. Congrats, Abby. You, you are a new Gonzo scholar for hard working. And she had another interesting question about the play to breed program. And she just wanted some details. There's a, if you go in the discord, there's an article there that can be found. Um, but basically the idea is, is that, you know, it's like you can teach the man to fish, and feed him the rest of his life, or you can sell him a fish and feed him for a meal. So the idea is that we want you guys to be part of the Axie community and not just, you know, forced labor to make SLP for us. We want you to be part of the community. And for that to happen, you need to have your own Axie. So, you know, there's this trial period of a month where if you make an S enough SLP, you, you meet the minimum requirements, uh, then you have enough SLP where you can breed. And then I'll bring the axes, or Stefano brings the axes, you bring the SLP, and then we split the axes that result in the breeding pairs. So, you know, hopefully the idea is that all the scholars graduate within like two or three months because they have three axes of their own. They can play their own team. And then you can start breeding those and you can, you know, have your own scholarship program with your friends and your family and your relatives and stuff. So, we yeah. really want everybody to not just grind away and just like uh, turn it into another job. We want you to actually be a part of it all. So that's the idea. And this is, I, I mean, I don't know any other scholarship programs that are doing this. So I think we're, it's a bit innovative and, you know, it really is just to help you guys out. Right. We definitely see some benefit from it as well, but the, the main focus is that we can make even more if we were, you know, less focused on helping you guys. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'll just quickly whip through a couple of other questions here. We've got one more one more scholarship today, guys. We'll do that quickly now. Well, yep. that should have been on like Twitter and so on, but I don't know if... Or Facebook. I don't know if you guys are being tagged or, or something like that. Nope, not in Twitter. Well, should we just then, do one quickly here, guys, today? Yep. And then we can uh, put a message in Discord about the what to do for the Twitter one. Abby's from uh, Argentina, she said. Or maybe Abby is a man's name. I have lots. Of, I have some relatives in uh, Argentina. Abby, I was nearly an Argentinian myself. What? <laughs> Say what? Uh, look, a couple of other good questions here. Uh, Ace Cold, do you think crypto games can hedge the bull market? I mean, look, I, I actually discussed this on a show earlier in the week. The you know the whole point of play to earn is you know if you, you're in a bear market and the and token values are are collapsing across the board you know you, you've got an asset that you're playing to earn um, so absolutely uh, I I would say that's the case I think it's one of the better use cases in blockchain currently 
Yeah, um, but I don't I don't think that it's gonna stop that. Like, you know, if right. if we're in the bull run, like remember what was the, the value that you were cashing in from for Maxi like a year ago, you know. And actually at that time cost like ten dollars, fifteen dollars, sixteen dollars. Like the the value that you huh? 10x right now. Yeah, that's the thing. The value that you were getting from like SLPs were maybe like one dollar, two dollars. You know, it's it's not crazy to think that like if we're entering a bear market that we, we're gonna get back on, on values along those lines. And if these prices are gonna go down exactly like that, you know. Now we're seeing prices that are like six, seven hundred dollars for random stuff or like even thousands of dollars. But the ratio on, on ETH, it's it's quite pretty much the same one as before. So you need to think that like you might be ready of getting like all of the stuff to be worth a tenth. Like in a bear market, you lose 90% of the value of what you're making daily and like your portfolio, yeah. your assets, your NFTs and all of that stuff. Would you still play Axie if you make one tenth for what you make now? So instead of making like ten dollars, you start cashing in one dollar a day. Would you still play? Um, those are all the answers. If your answer is yes, then you have an edge against the bear market. But for a lot of people, unfortunately, that's that's completely different. A mm. uh, couple of other things here: best exchanges to cash out to fear. Well, we we don't really like answering those sort of questions but I, I do understand that for a lot of people this entire game is about making some returns and going back into your local currency nothing wrong with that you will learn over time that it's better to stay in crypto but for for now it is a valid question uh so look it, it, it's something i the, the, look the the rates appear to very wildly uh create uh f, with regards to fees i personally haven't cashed out uh, but I know sort of onboarding the the fees of actually getting been getting Stefano to use an exchange in Singapore because they were f- charging less than 2%, whereas the one I'd been using is charging 10%. So you need to shop around, but uh, maybe people in the chat could recommend um, what they've found cost-effective for that type of thing. I don't know if uh, Stefano or, or, or Gonzo, if you've got any any thoughts on what you would consider the best place for that. For me, I use uh, just like for on ramp in and out. I use Coin Hako. Um, it's only for Singaporeans, though, right? And Malaysia, right? Is uh, is in those two countries. They have a one percent fee, um, so it's quite a right. And the the cash out is two dollars. Whatever amount you cash out is two dollars. So I find that like pretty good. Takes like three, four business days to to send the money to the bank account. I don't really do that much, to be honest, because I don't really cash out much. But I find that being like the very best process and smooth things. I send the ETH, I send, I sell them, and then bam, just like doing the, mm. the withdrawal. Mr. Gonzo, any any thoughts on that one? Yeah, the onramp is the same. I just use a local exchange called Bitcub here, uh, which is you know it's totally centralized. But it's super convenient because it connects to my Thai bank account. You know, I just say withdraw X amount of bot, and then you send a confirmation code. Ten minutes later, it's there, and I can buy. You know, they've got like 20, 25 coins you can buy in Thai bot directly. But usually, I'll just do that. Yeah. If I'm bringing money in, and for money out, I just use that same exchange if I need Thai bot. And for Canadian money, you know, I haven't used a Canadian account in a long time, but I also have crypto.com that I've used with their card purchases once in a while, but that's deactivated now. So, but the crypto cards, it seems to be the best way if you want to cash out. I just got one yesterday uh, from a company that we, we actually dealt with as a channel, God, over a year or so ago now. What's it called? Yes, it is What's actually it called? called to the moon to the moon card. I got the to the moon card. People. <laughs> so you can load crypto onto these and uh, basically use it anywhere. Visa is accepted. Uh, I'm going to have a chat with the the CEO who I know, see if we can do some sort of deal for uh, for the audience. So we'll let you know about that in the coming week or two. They're just relaunching at the moment, so stay tuned for that one as well, people. Along with our 
announcement of the announcement of the announcement of some more uh, play to earn yeah, action that's coming your way. What Need a to- show it's been, and we're going to wrap it up now. But we, uh, do, what have we decided? Are we doing one more uh, team here quickly? Yes, no, Jordan. Are there, I guess it's your team. Do you want to decide? Yeah, more teams. I don't know how we give it away, yeah. but yeah, I got. I can, we can give two more. Okay, away. it's happening right now, people. So this is your last chance to shoot in a good question. You could even ask a personal question of uh, if you've run out of crypto questions of uh, of Stefano or Mister Gonzo. They love to tell you about that sort of stuff. George, what do you got? Come on, let's go. Uh, do you think the bear market for crypto will really roll over to things like Axie? In a bear market, save money, stay home, and play and earn. A bear market is maybe just what Axie needs to go. Uh, I think that like that, that's more like the lockdown than that, the, the well, that's bear a market. that's a life bear market. That's not a crypto bear market. Yeah, that's that's because the thing. right like, now we're in a in a real world bear market. We've got our like tunnel vision on where we think that everything is rosy because we're in a crypto bull market. But the rest of the world is in a bear market, it seems like, you know? That, that's true. So, I mean, like Singapore is going back to lockdown now for, for another month. Seychelles, which we work with, uh, and is one of the countries with the highest number of vaccination app, and it's, it's back in lockdown as well. So it, it is true. Like that scenario is indeed everybody's at home. And, and statistics have shown that like because everybody's at home, saving rates has increased because people are spending less money and spending on things like, you know, Netflix, video games, and all of this stuff, uh, or even house furnitures has increased because, you know, people spend more time in, 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 in a close place. But on the other side, I also think that like, Right now, if I'm looking at like, you know, a session on, let's take SLP at these values at like 20 cents or whatever it is. Um, now, we all know that it's not true because of like the old contract and the new contract and so on. But just like for the sake of the example, right now for a session of SLP with 20 cents, you cash in around like 200 SLP a day, which is $40. $40 is an insane amount of money. No kidding. You can play like a, you know, one match and you win eight SLP or 10 SLP. That's like two bucks. That, that's the thing. So, you know, $40 a day for a session that would take you like one or two hours. You are psychologically very motivated because like, is it 20, 30, 40 hours rate? Like it's, it's, it's huge. Like it's a lot of money. If you're cropped at a 90%, I'm not saying that people are going to stop doing that, but the amount, the motivation becomes less and less because it's less money. It's true you're locked at home, but at that point, I'm like, do I want to spend two hours on getting $1 or do I rather just watch a movie? But that's you know? when you have to understand a market cycle too, right? If you're accumulating when it's low, that's when you hold and then you sell when it's high instead of selling all the time, right? If you understand the market and how it works, there's going to be peaks and valleys. So if you see it's going, holy crap, it's so high, sell some. You'll feel way better. That's true. But the usage overall, the numbers, like we saw how oh, yeah. it was like from 2017, when we were at the peak of 2017, usage of, of things, whatever was possible, was actually very high. Once we got into the bear market, people disappeared. Mm-hmm. You know, people that were in the space were like, oh, I sold everything. I'm out. That's it. I don't want to even talk about crypto anymore. Yeah, but there was no use case back then, right? Like there was very sure. minimal, very minimal. But that's why this, you know, this is a good question because it, it is. That is a question. Is crypto going to have that stickiness if people aren't making money hand over fist? And if they do stick around, what are they going to stick around for? Would you play Axie as often as you do now if you would make like a tenth of, like literally if you would make like one dollar per day would you play as much as you're playing now mm, honestly I don't know. like i'm not much of a gamer but man it's a fun game i love it like i find that, it like quite repetitive after a little bit too well much. for me i'm what i'm getting into now is the like the meta right like it's like on a bigger chess, chess level you know it's like seeing the strengths and the weaknesses and stuff and then like engineering axes to combat like these teams that you're always seeing that are always winning so it's, it's like a multi, not just like playing the same team over and over again, but what's keeping me into it is the, like creating new tactics and new strategies, right? So like with the scholars in the, in, in the Discord there, you know, I'll post a team idea and they're like, oh yeah, this would work good with that and this would good with that. Oh, but it needs this part. 
So you go and you like find the parts and you like, doo, doo, you breed them, you wait a couple of days. You're like, and like, oh, okay, this is going to be a good axiom. It'll work perfect in this situation. Right. So that it's not directly the axiom game, but the whole ecosystem around it is what's keeping me involved. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Brent, Brent asked, play to win games look very crude now compared to mainstream AAA games on PC and consoles. Any idea when gameplay will improve? Stefano. Uh, See nine chronicles? That looks pretty cool. It does look cool. That does not look crude at, at all. Right? The gra- yeah, I know the design is nice. We do have like other example. We do have like some gems that are like popping up. Blancos is another one. Yeah, um, Blancos is AAA. Blankers is nice. Uh, you, you know, like overall, you, you do got the the very boring type of gameplay, Alien Ward. Let's be honest, like it's it's super basic. Uh, Call Myth is another game that is like very, very basic. And then you start having like some middle high levels, like XE, like Nine Chronicles and so on. Um, Town and then Star you... looks really nice. nice Town Star is dumb. Is, is, Town Star, I would put that into like the Blankers level. Because Townstar yeah. is very, very well polished. Like, yeah. it's it's solid polish. So Lost answer- Relic is into that category of, like, XC between. Uh, Light Knight is a little bit lower. The, you do have, like, this, these different categories. I think that we're still very, very far from from that real thing that, that we all want to see. Like, you know, we want to see, like, Light Knight becoming Fortnite and with the blockchain integration. We want to okay. see, you know, Blankus becoming like uh, the, 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 the party guy or funny guy, whatever, full guys, um, the, the main title that there is there and, and so on. We're going to get there, but I don't see that being there yet. But that, I mean, that, is that a finished. factor of budget though, right? Like those major AAA platform games, like those are hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. product, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Those are bigger than the market caps of almost every crypto game out there. So, yeah. right, like it's scaling, right? Once you can't go and build a game that big without a, a player user base. Oh, for sure. Like to, the to user bases are growing and the demand is growing. So we're going to get those level of games soon, and it's already for early. sure. What one of the thing is that like so I I one of my good friends is the guy that wrote the entire um, Assassin Creed uh, sagas like he's the writer so like all the dialogues and all of those things he was the director and all of those things and back in 2017 we were like on the bull run he tried to do an ICO to to build the game and everything and the budget that he was trying to raise was like substantial like there were like two or three millions that he was trying to raise and so on. Now, when we are comparing that two, three millions to a triple eight like Assassin Creed, you're already like in two badges that are completely different. Like what Jordan is mentioning is is 100% true. Now, however, we start being in a situation where, you know, a couple of millions, five, 10 millions, 20 millions raised on an IDO and so on start being normal, start being possible because obviously like market is growing. We're all like richer on being in the space and so on. So we can afford to actually like invest in projects that are cool, which means that potentially we might get to the point of getting projects that are developing games that are actually being able to raise maybe like 50, 60, 80 millions and then push out a solid triple a game at that point it's it will happen we're just mm. not there yet yeah it's coming you know uh, you everyone watching this everyone involved in, in axie uh now if, you know look we're all very early here people it's a great opportunity i think there's going to be some very good investments uh, in the space as well uh and we help hope to help you all as much as we can a with scholarships b with steering you in the right direction of uh where we're where we're putting our uh, our hard earned coins. Um, we're getting some great. <laughs> I'm loving some of these questions from Tsoi Kolokoi. Where are you from, Tsoi? Um, just very quickly, you asked, "Do we hate Elon?" Number one, I don't hate anyone. Carrying hate around in, in your life is a terrible thing to do. Do I like him? Not today. No, not at all. <laughs> Stefano, Mister Gonzo, very quickly, do you hate Elon? 
No, no, no. I that well, I mean, I I'm the opposite of what what you just say. I do have people that I hate and and like solidly hate. Um, but apart from that, no. I I think that Elon is just being like a massive enormous troll, and I'm still on the side of people that are laughing on that. Why? Because I didn't buy Bitcoin when he was shilling that. I didn't touch Dogecoin when he was shilling that. I've been mentioning to people to really do not touch anything that you're reading from like celebrities, VAP and so on. I mentioned that so many times. So it doesn't affect me in any possible way. I'm just like reading and enjoying and having a laugh. So no, you're kidding. I, I like that. He's a meme. Okay. Mr. Gonzai. Uh, I don't hate him. I just think that he's trolling a or working the market, you know, like yeah. it's standard will stuff, you know, and he's like, trying to come across as holier than thou but you know it just kind of shows that he's really not and no well, I, I think there's two scenarios that is possible right now uh he's that oblivious and he doesn't know what he's talking about with bitcoin mining which i find highly doubtful mm-hmm. or there's some kind of weird higher thing happening you know with the coordinated fud all at the same time the narratives are just like lining up exactly like you know, it's market manipulation. It's just the question is, is how level does that level, how high a level does that manipulation go is my question. Yeah. Okay. And I think maybe this is our last question. It's actually from t again, and I do think it's a good one to sort of finish up with. What do you think of the Axie community, gentlemen? Is it for a lifetime or may it break down someday? Well, I mean, if you what did you watch that play to earn documentary last night? If you watch that thing all the way through, it kind of gives you a, an interesting perspective on it. You know, like they were interviewing young people, you know, 12, 13, 14. They were like, there was a shop owner. They, you know, it was a 65 year old lady and her like 75 year old husband. And the husband's like, yeah, I get up, I play, I tend to my shop. You know, we make $2 a day at the shop. I make $5 a day on Axie. Like, I'm going to do this as long as possible. We pray to God that it doesn't go away. And when you have like that kind of commitment from a community, it's like, okay, well, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it seems like it's, it's a pretty like- good indication of how long it will last when you, when you, when you see, see the stories we have, right. I don't yeah. think it's going away in a hurry. That's for sure. No, it's definitely going to evolve and change and there's going to be other competitors and other things happening, but as far as a trailblazer and uh, you know, an innovator, it's definitely there, I think. Mm. I, I yep. think that like that goes to what Gio was mentioning also when we had him on the last time. Axie knows to be the the leader on the play to earn uh, space right now, and there is I I agree with him when he said that there is no doubt on that because it's true. There is the numbers speaks for for that pretty clearly. Um, that doesn't mean that competition is not going to come. That yeah. doesn't mean that X will always be on the top. You know, that means that like the the token economy, the, the things like X is in a good position because they're leaders, but they're also like in a tough position because they need to figure out a lot of things on their own because they're the first one trying out. And that's like when you're an innovator, it's always tougher. New games that are going to come can just like copy and paste that and, and catch up very quickly because, you know, you're playing actually one or two hours a day. You still have more games. You still have more time in a day that you can catch up with like other communities, other games. So as long as you start having other games that allowed you to get like similar incomes, you start going there. Um, and then it becomes a competition. Look, I'm, I'm not saying that Axie is going to stick around forever. I know that the dream, obviously, for the Axie community is to build something that will last as long as Pokemon. Um, it's early to say that. It's very early. We're talking about like 40,000 players. It's enormous on the blockchain space. It's peanuts on the gaming industry. So, you know, the road is still very, very long. They're leading right now. They're an awesome community. They're amazing doesn't give the security that they're going to stick around forever. Yeah. It's got yep. like, and oh, yeah. It? Okay. So, I mean, what T soy, is he uh, the front runner for a scholarship oh, come up. at the moment? I'm not, not sure if he actually wants one or not, whether he already has come one. <laughs> T-Soy. <laughs> T-Soy. Yeah, you want a scholarship? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you win, buddy. Do you have time to play T-Soy? Because we want we want to give these scholarships to people that really need them. So let us know. There's a question from Kamuta Adrian. How much SLP do you guys get every month? 
So if we break down the tokenomics of the program, we ask, you know, we have, it's not very like we check on you every hour, but over the span of the first month, it'd be nice if you could get at least 5,000 SLP, uh, 4,000 is acceptable. And that breaks down to a thousand a week, 750 a week kind of thing. Um, it's oh, not then, then for the much wow, you're very far behind many of you guys. <laughs> I can tell you what the heck are you doing? <laughs> And then the split works that the scholar gets 65% of whatever they earn and the program gets 65%, uh, 35%. So, yep, 65, so, 35 is a split for whatever the player earns. I have some stats if, if you want like more uh, proper numbers and everything, jokes aside. So uh, me personally, I do, I try to be around like 185 SLP um, a per day. day. Yep. Which is basically like 100 for a venture, 50 from the daily task, and 35 because it's seven uh, for the um, arena. I'm not trying to be position high on the arena or anything like that. I'm trying to be as fast as I can because for me, it's like 185 is is enough, and I'm better, and uh, and I'm happy with that. On average, uh, for the much wow uh, scholars, the average right now is 1,061 SLP per week that has been generated. Um, but over there, you get like very huge spikes. Like that's really, really the average. Um, how are you getting those averages? Are you uh, adding them all up? How, how are you getting those averages? Because I calculate that every Monday manually. Oh, oh yeah. We need some bots, man. I literally go manually on every single account. I check that. I get in contact with people that are like not producing because like I want to yeah. see if everything is okay or not. Uh, it, it's, it's like so two hours just to switch between all the wallets. Yeah not even like all the communication that goes on between it. Yeah, it's really, it's a little bit glitchy too between Ronin and uh, Ethereum. Sometimes it works perfectly. A little it, bit, a little you bit. You got to log out both of them and then, oh, it takes a lot of time to do some of this stuff. It's really stupid. But yeah, we, we, we're not there in terms of UI. We're no. really not. Okay, guys, we're actually coming up at two hours. We've, uh, we've been online here. Once again, we were... <laughs> So much for our short and sweet shows, uh, but it, it's been. Listen, you've been much more interactive this week, people. That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, and moving forward, please tell your friends about the show. Yes, we're going to be giving away the the scholarship teams. We will, and you have my word on this. We will also give away some some tokens of other projects uh, next week as well on this live show on Friday. And we hope to have a, a rather special announcement for you about another initiative. Uh, that we're we're launching so make sure you're all here next friday now did we decide we're uh t-soy has asked a, a, a whole heap of questions today you boys happy for uh yep. bring him into the into the program sure can we uh yeah and just as yep. a special surprise we're going to give aldrin one as well oh you the man i was hoping you'd, you were going to do that he was i saw him uh, very kindly asking there you go so this oh, is done, aldrin we got abby t-soy and Aldrin, please contact me on Discord and make sure you fill out the form so all your information is nice, easily found. And yeah, welcome. Let's go. There you go. Three scholarships today. Um, for, for those of you that are still looking, make sure you're back here next Friday. Um, and as I say, there, you know, I'm personally, uh, there's a couple of people I got my eye on at the moment who, who I'm just really impressed. I, I love the fact that you, you retweet everything from the three of us. You're, you know, you're, you're liking videos, you're commenting, you're getting involved. Uh, it's trust me, it doesn't go unnoticed. I'm in, I'm in there every day, uh, look, looking. So, please keep that up. Uh, you know, we're trying to build a, a great community here, and that's certainly well underway. So we appreciate that. And uh, look, thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll be back here live um, next Friday. It's going to be our biggest show yet. I can assure you of that. So. Tell your friends, get them to subscribe. Thank you, Mr. Gonzo. I know you are absolutely under the pump, doing a million things at the moment. So, so is uh, Stefano. So everyone does appreciate your time. I got the cabin fever too, man. I'm so sick of this. Life. Oh, I can imagine. My yeah. daughter and school and cooking and Jesus. It's just like there's not enough, not enough hours in a day. Yeah. So you I'll actually, well, say, what's what's the deal? You you can't really sort of get out and about at all. And no, the them. restaurants are not open. The only thing that you can do is sports outside. And I like you know once a week I play football and that's it. Other than oh, that, man, the kids home. Man, no, for, you can't for go real. Doors, it's like fuck yeah. As soon as we're back on like 
being able to like leave this place and so on, I swear God, I jump on a plane, I go on a desert island for a week and like I, I just wanna like escape from all of this. I wanna go on like a week long rave and get fucked up out of my brain for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> just blow cod shit out my like seriously, just blow off a week long food. rave for a month. That's how yes. fucked up you're gonna be. Exactly. <laughs> And it's a, I'll and join you. a year. I, I just, I've, I've had no social life now for God about 18 months, apart from hanging out with Stefano occasionally. Yeah, which is not a nice thing. <laughs> to trust me, <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst possible person to hang out with. Okay, lads, I got to go and get my daughter ready for some other stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Dude. All right. Thank, thanks very much, guys. And uh, most importantly, thank you, all, all of you, for, for joining us. Let everyone know we're here. See you.